Hi, everybody. I'm very pleased to um, welcome Neil Williamson to this Take the Lead Operational Excellence series. Neil, thank you so much for making the time to do this. Yeah, you're welcome, Rob. Pleasure to be here. So Neil is currently one of the top dogs at Popeye's Chicken, which you've probably already heard about. There's a huge buzz around the brand, and I'm sure Neil will tell everybody all about it. We originally actually worked together when you were at a prior um uh, a prior famous operator, Neil, but if you don't mind, I'd like to start by just going all the way back to the very beginning and saying when you review all of the companies that you've worked for and you can choose to name them or not, who would you say was the most operationally excellent outfit that you were ever a part of? Okay, uh, start with a tough question, eh? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I We'll start by saying that it was never my intention to get into QSR or operations. Uh, for someone that was studying and wanted to fly airplanes for a living, um, it was a, a university funding uh, arrangement between myself and parents. You know, get out in the big bad world and, and find yourself a job, Neil. Um, McDonald's were the guys on the high street that were hiring at the time, actually, as they were, they were growing and expanding in the UK. Um, I went along for the interview for the experience and found myself being hired and, and, and enrolled in, in, in a restaurant in the Northeast in a place called Newcastle upon Tyne. I think what I learned over the 15 years uh, with that brand really taught me um, about operations, the model, the guests, the experience, um, the systems and the processes. You know, I think a, a global brand such, 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 such as they are I think, yeah, and, and, and speaking to many over the years that have, have started in that way or, or, or on their journey of, of, of worked for, for the Golden Arches. Yeah, I would say I'm always fond. Um, I still say we uh, when I talk about the brand. And I think for, for anyone out there that still calls a, a prior um, job or, or company we, I think, yeah, they'll know what I mean by that. Yeah, fantastic business, yeah, grounds you very well and teaches you the basic fundamentals of, 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 of not just service, um, quality and cleanliness, but the basic steps of management to equip you with what you need to, to prosper in the future. Did you think that would be easier to replicate as you go into new organizations, Neil? Like, cause it, cause when you describe it, it sounds simple, right? Like the McDonald's formula. And yet very few people have ever managed to replicate that in, in other corporate entities. I just don't understand why. Yeah. You know what? It's, um, it is something from the outside looking in, um, it looks a lot simpler than what it is. Um, but it's not. I think, yeah, there are numerous processes and procedures for every single step and every journey, you know, you know, whether it be making the iconic Big Mac or, you know, serving a, a portion of medium fries or pulling a Coca-Cola. I think the steps that go behind that are testament to the work put in by the team there to make sure that whether you get served in you know, a store in Aberdeen or a store in Plymouth, you get the same experience and you get the same product every time. I think I took that for granted um, when I first you know, kind of stepped away from the Golden Arches into the next opportunity that I had with Krispy Kreme. Um, I think part of you um, should leave maybe some of the systems and processes in the brand you were with prior because you know, it's about the new brand above the door. But equally, there's a reason why you know, McDonald's deliver the experience they deliver in the way they do. And I think bringing those systems and processes and that experience on with you can help you and help your colleagues. Um, I think one thing that I learned you know, in the journey that I've been on is, is you do take it for granted. Um, you, know, you almost then land in a business that doesn't have those standards um, and it's not getting frustrated, but it's getting motivated and excited by the fact that you can help shape and create. Because um, if you get frustrated, you can see why you would, you know, you would not um, want to be in that business for, for very much longer or maybe why you couldn't, um, be as successful and maybe as you wanted to be. And I think the turning point for me when I joined Crispy was, you know, we were 28 stores when I joined, um, 135 when I left. We were going on this journey. And I think to, 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 to make that brand successful, we had to adopt systems that a small to medium grown business needed to. Um, and for me, it was about turning those frustrations and that, you know, the kind of a lack of process into how can we as a team go on this journey together uh, and, and, and deliver, ultimately deliver so that we experience you know, better shifts and better environments for, for each other, but ultimately deliver a better experience to our guests. It makes sense. Um, I don't want to embarrass you, but I'm going to anyway. Like I know because we've got some industry friends in common who were your peers at, at, in, in the McDonald's era. I know that you were one of the top performing managers in several of the roles that you held. 
on the basis that McDonald's is such a standardized operation, how does one end up coming top of the pack in an organization that's heavily systematized and in theory, everyone's doing the same thing down to the number of pickles in the burger? Like, what is it that you did that led to you being a top regional performer? Can you remember? Um, you know what, for me, and, and I think we, we, we all learn on the journey. Uh, and I think biggest part of learning is, is making those mistakes and, and, and not necessarily coming top of the tree. I think, yeah, we all strive to want to be winners, don't we? You know, we have that program, especially in the industry, in, in, the, in the food industry. We want to do well. We want to be rewarded for doing well. We want our colleagues and our peers to do well. But it's how we pick ourselves up from those times maybe where we don't deliver the result or we don't achieve where we want it to be. It's how we pick ourselves up and analyze to do better next time. Um, I think for me, the, the, the golden nugget, if I, could, if I could call it that, is, 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 <laughs> is communication. Uh, pardon the pun, it wasn't intended. Um, but when I was you know, fortunate enough to be coming through the ranks from you know, joining as a staff member or you know, a, a burger flipper, if you want to call that, um, I would often find myself being pulled to one side by a manager, being told off for doing something that I should have done, yet I didn't get any direction on what it was they wanted me to achieve. So, so the message that was coming down about actually what they wanted from me, from, from me and from my colleagues wasn't clear. So therefore, I wasn't delivering, but I was being then told off for not delivering it. So one of the things that it taught me and was, was stepping through the, the journey in management was you have a finite amount of time on a shop floor. You know, these environments that I'm sure many of us walk into are very busy. Uh, the guest is demanding, you know, the, the service quicker every day as standards across brands get higher. Um, if you're going to give a message to an employee, you're going to give a message to a manager, be clear and concise. And sometimes take them on the journey of why you want them to get that result in the first place. Because if they've got a better, clearer understanding, then they're far more likely to deliver it. That's amazing. So I... So, so it sounds like I don't want to paraphrase. Well, I do want to paraphrase. I'm going to try. Um, what led to the operating performance that caused you to carry on getting promoted was actually fixing things that you had not had the benefit of at the level below. And that then created differentiation perhaps between you and your peers at the next level. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I mean in terms of metrics, uh, you know, yeah, we were very fortunate. I say we because it's a team. It's, it's not my results. It's their results as well. And I think me helping them understand about, well, we have this KPI dashboard in the business guys, and this is right down to the shop floor level. This is to our, our, our staff serving our customers and cooking our burgers. And even the guy that's putting the delivery away because actually this care and attention needed there as well. So I want us to go on this journey. I want us to show the rest of the country that this group of restaurants can be proud of the results they're achieving. And this is why. And I think when you help break it down and explain it in that way, you get everybody on board and together they march forward in their own respective positions, they know what they'll contribute, but equally we go forward together as a team and we make sure along the way we celebrate the successes all the way up to if we get first position. I mean, in, 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 in McDonald's, that was afforded to, to, to our team. We, we were number one out of, I think at the time, 72 consultant groups. Um, it wasn't about being in the pole position. It was about all of us being proud of knowing we're delivering a great experience for each other and our guests every day. That's amazing. Um, all right. I'm, I'm going to be a bit naughty. And um, because people talk about values and culture and you're very strong when you talk about cultures and cultures and values, but I feel like it's, it's like love, right? You only sort of know it once you've experienced it. And so there'll be a lot of people watching this that might've never had the benefit of working in a really, really culturally strong organization, right? So sometimes when you talk about culture in the affirmative, in the positive, those that have never experienced it, you sort of lose them. So I really like to talk about anti-values because anti-values, in my opinion, are quite often just a mirror image of what your values are, even if you don't understand them yourself. So from your personal perspective, I don't expect you to talk on behalf of Popeyes, although you're welcome to if you want to. What are your anti-values? What are the sort of behaviours and characteristics that would see someone evicted from a Neil Williamson operation? Hmm, interesting question. Um, I think you have to care. I, I think, um, you know, that, that, that level of care that you have, whether you're on us or sorry, whether you're with us for a short amount of time on a journey and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, the, 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 this industry is not for everybody. Yeah. You know, it might serve time and purpose for somebody, but you know, when they're studying for a degree or a master's or they need some part-time work, I think the benefit of, 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 of this industry is we have, um, availability to, to suit all needs. But I think when you're with us, you're with us, you're invested. Um, and I think that's what 
that I care passionately about. And I think that's how, you know, to rub Neil up the wrong way, I guess, if you could put it in, in, in that sense. Yeah. We will give you what you need from us. You know, we will hire you in the conditions that you ask from us. But when you're with us, give us the time and the energy that you've committed to give us. And I think, you know, if you do that, then the business will look after you. They will see you right, um, whether you're here for a short amount of time and you want to come back in in, in, in term time or non-term time, but for, for that matter. Um, or if you want a journey with us. And actually, it's interesting. You know, we, we talk about journey, for example. And I guess some people don't realize they want a journey at the time that, that, that they're on this journey. Um, I didn't recognize that when I joined McDonald's that I was embarking on a journey that would lead me to being in 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 in, in retail and hospitality for thirty years. Um, sometimes, as a as an employer, we have to make the 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 employee realize that that's available. Um, but equally, they have to be invested, and I think that's the big thing that I ask you know that you invest your time and willingness to learn and train with us whilst you're with us. It's funny, isn't it? Because that's extraordinarily simple and it's clear. It's pre- For me, that's pretty binary, which I think great values should be. Um, have you, with Popeyes, because you've got this interesting situation where it seems to me it's almost like a kind of a startup in terms of the sort of geographic launch. But of course, it's got this wonderful sort of product and brand heritage in other parts of the world. To what extent are you putting your own stamp on the on the culture and values or a culture and value something that you had to buy into when you decided that this was going to be a brand you were going to represent for the next chapter of your career um it's an interesting one because i think um for those that that know the brand or would you know jump on the internet and google the brand there's there's three and a half thousand restaurants across the world um and i think the 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 piece that we would always want to take that we were actually really interested in when we brought this brand to the uk was the heritage I think if you look at the fact that you have a you know, Louisiana-style kitchen, um, you know, kind of you know, raw ingredients being mixed in bowls and creating fusion with menu, to the New Orleans service style, you know, the Mardi Gras party culture that, that we've built into, even the design and the look and the colour and the feel of our restaurant, I think we, we always wanted to piggyback on that. So, so that was a big piece that we did bring along on the journey. And actually our brand owners wanted us to bring and 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 they bring to any other country that that that, that they embark upon i think the, the the bit you then have to do is say how is this going to work in the uk so how is the uk consumer going to see this um yeah lots of american brands are successful but we know some brands aren't uh and then how do we make sure that the menu in the way that it's 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 constructed um you know right down to you know what's the perfect pairing um and 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 what's the you know, the price of the product that's really interesting because we launched a product called the biscuit. Um, so for, for, for someone from the UK, you know, certainly for myself, it would be, you know, you could refer to it as a, as a UK version of a scone or a scone. Um, and it's lacking, you know, jam and, and, and clotted cream. Uh, it's a warm scone. Uh, and we could have left it. Many other countries across uh, EMEA left it when they launched the Popeye's brand. But we thought, you know what, it's part of the heritage and we should do it. Um, we are selling as many biscuits as the brand sells in the US. No uh, way. It, it's been incredible. And actually, it's probably the most frequent add-on and frequent requested product. So, so it's been phenomenal. But it was one of those that we tabled. And you can imagine you could waste hours upon hours in a room discussing whether you should or you shouldn't. And at the end of the day, we said, just do it. You know, just do it. It's iconic. It's the right thing to do. And it's turned out to be amazing. And in retrospect, now the other countries are questioning whether they should put it on the menu as well. So, so, so I think... Yeah, definitely bringing the heritage of the brand, uh, the culture of the brand's been important, but then it definitely needs a UK lens. Um, you know, we have a UK management team that all come from some very successful businesses. And I think, yeah, culture is an important one. You know, you, t- you asked the question on culture. And I think we haven't landed on a, on a, on a, a refined, designed set of statements that we would propose would be our culture in the business. We've actually said there are... Um, a couple of items that we care passionately about, but actually as a team of people that's building a brand, let's decide as we go on the journey, what our culture should be and let's shape it. Because ultimately in a business that delivers it every day, that should be the culture, not a statement that's on a wall somewhere that gets dusted off every time you have a meeting that you should talk about. And I think that's that's hopefully testament to some of the early success we've had in the UK since we've launched. Totally. And it, and it comes down to the quality of the people that you hire then, doesn't it? Because you are what you do and the people that you hire then is- 
inform the culture and then if you get enough of the right people on the bus you can then document what those collective values are there are a lot of um there's a huge amount of churn in the sector at the moment we all know this like people are moving roles often for very exciting new opportunities so i'm not saying it's necessarily bad it is if you're a hiring manager or your kpi is to retain people if you were advising somebody moving into a new role whether you're an operations leader or maybe somebody rolling into an operations leader um what would you say would be or should be your first priorities gen generally as a new occupant of an operating role in a new business um i think you've got to feel really comfortable with the business i think yeah for, for me and i'll always say this to a candidate that i will be interviewing um and, and, and actually, I think that the, the, the term interview or, or an interview across a table with someone with a flip chart is, is quite outdated. You know, I'm quite surprised that the industry has not moved on uh, in, in, in that field. Um, for me, it's getting them you know, amongst it, getting them you know, in the kitchen, on the counter. Um, you know, it's, it's them investing a little bit of time in us and us in, in, in them before they even join a brand. Um, because... I think you're right. I think that the, the turnover in the industry, you know, whether it be through Brexit or through on the back of COVID, is it, it's at an all-time high. Um, and I think people are job hopping because there's opportunity available, but equally they don't really know where they want to land. So one of the things that we're doing at Popeyes is we we're using um, discovery days or discovery shifts for individuals that want to kind of test before the buy, almost like a test drive if you're going to go, go and buy a car or. Yeah, you know, if you were going to go and buy a house, you, you would invest in, in, in time and commitment. Um, so we're asking people to give us as, as little or as much time as they'd like on the shop floor, talking to colleagues, asking the real questions. Um, if there's something that they want to get more involved in than, than another section, we will spend time with them on it. Um, and then it's almost an investment at the end on both parts. So it's, you know, let's not leave any elephants you know, in the pocket. Let's put them on the table and have those conversations from the off about you know what it is you want out of us um what can we do for you and what can you do for us um as i said earlier on i think maybe sometimes they don't know what they want maybe they discover that throughout their their, their, their time but i think some people come in and they want to be progressive they want to prosper but some people want to use this as a stop gap because they you know they need something to pay the bills whilst they're studying and i think having that upfront conversation earlier rather than later down the line will really help the business and will help the candidate um, so I think that, that, that that's definitely a big thing. And I think recognizing in today's world that um, you can't just assume that somebody wants uh, you know, full time hours and they want to work 45 hours a week and they want to work you know, uh, evenings and weekends. Yeah, I think times have changed. I think yeah, people's expectations have changed. Um, I think you know, as a business, we've really tried to hire more part time staff than we've hired full time staff. Part time that can flex what we can give the shifts to suit the, 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 the individual rather than almost demand what the business needs. Um, yeah, we know the business needs to be manned across the key hours, but actually we're trying to say, well, what does the candidate need and how many candidates do we need to fit those shifts rather than the way around? Makes a ton of sense. Um, while you're on the theme of change, how would you say that your leadership style has evolved over the years, Neil? Um, quite hugely, actually. I think um, I mean, I look at the the the, the, the Neil of you know, kind of coming up through the ranks, you know, being a shift manager, assistant manager, and general manager, and I look at maybe some of the ways I I I, I commanded my team and 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 communicated, and and I sometimes cringe, I'll be honest, at, at maybe how I got the result I got. Um, but you know what, I've always done it with the interest of the employee and the guest in mind. I guess yeah, that that's the thing that keeps me feeling proud. Uh, it's never been about me. It's been about we. I think, you know, as, as corny as that may sound, it's, yeah, you know, I've always been the guy that wants to recognize, you know, the people that work for me as much as, you know, take the recognition myself. Um, I think, you know, the world is, is, is a changing place. I think the demands and the needs of the employee has is, is, is changed rapidly over the years. And I think you have to certainly take the time out to listen um, a lot more now than maybe you would have in the past. Um, I think, Certainly, I invest a good proportion of my time each week talking to um, all levels of the team. You know, I, I'm quite proud to say we don't sit in a very hierarchical business of Popeyes. You know, we might have it. It's on a piece of paper. It's saved on a desktop top somewhere. But 
I'm as willing to serve a guest as 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 the employee is. Yeah, I do it because I like to, not because I have to, and 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 that's a good thing in in, in the business. Uh, but I think working alongside the the team, I think taking the time, investing scheduled time to sit down with your managers and not just talk about KPIs, but talk about them and how they are and what maybe they need to be more successful. I think is more important in today's modern world than it probably ever was when I was kind of coming up through the ranks as a, as a junior manager in, in mid-management. Well, I mean, one of the things I found is I don't think it's any secret that, we, that we've I've worked for you twice now, Krispy Kreme and now at Popeyes. And one of the things I thought was super interesting that we'd never seen, although we've rolled it across some of our other customers, is when you made us build the made my day different, uh, made my day difficult form into your into your sort of, you know, your employee hub um, apps tab on yapster um i thought that was that was very cool i just interesting i i might try and like put maybe i'll get someone to put a little image up on screen so people can see what i'm talking about but i just just be interested if we can just close by just understanding why did you do that yeah well i I think it's 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 testament to i guess the things i've been saying about listening to people um it's very easy because we've done it and we've had the badge um to kind of um assume we know best when we're not serving you know, the, the, the amount of guests or we're not dealing with the experiences that today's modern world bring, that maybe when, yeah, 20 years ago, and I'm making myself sound old, um, I was in a restaurant and I was serving guests. And right then it maybe worked, but we can't just assume it's going to work today if it, if it worked back then. So I think made my day, make my day difficult was as we're taking time out to listen to our employees and we're investing that schedule time, we're hearing that there are things that, or very subtle changes in the business that a business can make to deliver significant value. Now, I don't necessarily mean shareholder value. I don't mean revenue value. I mean, sometimes the small pockets of value that keep people in the business that are the final straw that make them hand their resignation into their manager at the end of that shift, or that make them walk off shift or choose you know, to drop their hours. Or actually, if we get it right, they'll increase their hours. So make my day difficult as a, as, a, as a form we have on the on the Yabster um, app. And if an employee at that specific moment in time, you know, we've all been in this world where if we could write down every great idea we had when we have it, then God, we, 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 we would be amazing, wouldn't we? But we forget and we wish we'd wrote it down because half an hour later, we forgot that we had that idea. <laughs> so, so, so make my day difficult is for them to use on their on their phone, on their app, as soon as they have the, 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 the idea and they give us, their name, if they want to, could be anonymous, but they tell us at, at, at that point in that day or at that event or, or in that process, something we could remove or slightly refine to make the job easier for them. And we get all sorts. I think that's the really exciting thing. Um, it's, yeah, it's literally, and yeah, the lettuce could be two centimeters bigger than it is now. And we would have to put one piece on Neil instead of putting two. And it's kind of like, we never thought of that. And as simple as that sounds, and as much as we want to kind of kick ourselves for, sometimes because you're dealing with such you know, a lot of things at one time, you just go with things. And it's the employees that are doing it monotonous day after day that realize there are different steps you could take. Uh, and I think just piggybacking on that for a second, we also launched another thing recently, Rob, and it was a bright idea. So on the back of Make My Day Difficult, what is something that they could do um, which we could bring to um, our brand that we could launch. And actually, we took that a step further. So let's just say an employee has an idea for a product or a process. What we do is every month we look at them uh, across the leadership team and we pick a couple of the, the ideas and we invite the team into uh, to, to the support office and we get them to, to present why they think it's a great idea. And actually, we then ask for their involvement if we want to run with it um, so that they take that idea all the way to fruition and then, then we launch it in, back into the restaurants. So, yeah, it's, it's maybe something for them as they're building their skills with us on their journey that yeah, excites them and motivates them. But why not, if someone has a great idea in a restaurant, why not then let them benefit from, from then putting that idea into motion and rolling it out? So, so that's been another successful tool that through the Yabster homepage uh, and through the app, we've been able to launch really quickly. And I think that's the benefit of, of Yabster, you know, being able to speak to, yeah, your workforce very quickly with a simple click or a touch of an app. Um, when we have an infinite amount of time in this industry, I think Yabster gives us that power to, to be able to do that when we need to do it. 
I was very kind of you to say, do you know what I love? And I appreciate you're a busy guy. You've grown your brand. So we'll have to go wrap up in a second. But what I love is you, you, the way you've started with how your career started at McDonald's and that deference for process and consistency. And then we've ended with uh, processes, but actually evolving processes and making processes fit for purpose. And I hope if anyone, if people could only take one thing away from this conversation with you, I hope it's that. It's that they can be passionate about process and consistency but open and authentic and flexible about making sure that those processes still work. And you're right. That comes down, I guess, to communication, whether it's done through an app or anything else. So thank you so much for being so generous sharing. Um, Neil, it's been awesome to speak to you and I'm excited to see Popeye's, you know, in the UK and beyond growing over the coming months and years. You're welcome. Cheers, Rob.